So in this lab activity, I'm going to make a metal activity series and we'll determine which metals are more reactive than others. So the way you would test um, ions for um, the reactivity is you would react them with other solutions and also with um, the same metal ions. So if you take a look here, down the, across the rows, I'm gonna put samples of each of those metals. And then down the columns, I'll put solutions that contain those ions. And then we'll see which ones will have a reaction. So first off, we'll prepare our solution. So in the first column, I'm going to put some a solution of iron ions. So I'll put a few drops in each one. We have that. And now I'll put some magnesium in the next column. This one's a little slower at the dropping. So some magnesium ions in each of these ones. hard to release the drops. Okay, and now we'll just put the zinc nitrate in the next one, so some zinc solution. Same thing as that one. Oops, that seems to be dripping a little too. And finally, we'll put a copper solution in. Our last column. There we go. So our solutions are prepared. So now I'll add some iron to each of the top row. We'll just add a few grains each, like so. The last one. There we go. So we'll let that sit. And now we'll add a little bit of magnesium in the next one. Now some zinc. There we go. Oh, you can see that the zinc is reacting right readily with the copper. Um, and then finally, we'll add some copper to the rest of them. and we'll let everything sit. So now that we've let things react for a while, we can go back and look at the results. So in the first column, going across iron, so what we're going to do is put check marks um, in boxes where, so you set up the grid just like this, and you'll set up um, check marks or X's if there's been a reaction. So if we look across iron, um, there hasn't been a change in this one. There's no color change, so it doesn't seem to be bubbles. It seems the same as before. Um, but if you look at the next one, same thing. There hasn't really been a color change. There's still the kind of grayish black particles. No color change in the solution. When you look in the zinc one, same thing. There's nothing, so we'll put an X there as well. So X, X, X. When you look over at copper, you can see that some of the granules have turned orange. 
So there has been a reaction there. So that would mean that iron is more reactive than copper. Um, then we drop down to magnesium. So you can see that the magnesium particles have changed color. They're not silvery white anymore. They've now turned orangish. So that would be a check mark. Then you move over to the next one. It's magnesium with magnesium. There's no change. Um, when we look at the zinc particles, um, I think there was some oxidation on some of the magnesium, but if you look carefully, there looks like there's been a couple of bubbles and there is some blackening of some of the zinc particles. So we would say that's a yes. And then finally over to the copper, there's been lots of bubbling. And um, so that's a sign that there's been a reaction. So we would put a check mark. So for magnesium, there'd be a check mark for iron, an X for magnesium, a check mark for zinc, and a check mark for copper. So, so far that one's been very reactive. It reacted with everything except for itself. When we drop down to zinc, zinc reacting with the iron solution, there was a reaction. So zinc was more reactive than the iron. So there was a reaction, there's a color change, they've kind of turned orangish and the iron solution actually is changing color to it appears. When we move over to magnesium, there's no change. So the particles just are seem inert. Go over to zinc, same thing, not much change. But then when you move over to the copper solution again, the particles have changed from a silvery color to an orangey red color. So there has been a reaction. So this one would be check, X, X, check. And then copper, the final one, you look all the way across and there has been no change in any of them. The particles stayed orange, the solution stayed the color, there are no bubbles. So X is all the way across. So if we set that up in a data table, if we go across the iron, this was an X, there was an X, an X, and a check mark. And then for magnesium, there was a check mark, an X, a check, and a check. For zinc, there was a check, an X, an X, and a check. And then finally, there were X's all the way across for copper. So if we were right to write a metal activity series, we see that magnesium reacted the most. So it would be the highest, the most reactive. Um, the next one that reacted was zinc. It reacted twice. Iron reacted once. And then finally copper reacted never. So the most reactive, magnesium followed by zinc, then iron, then copper. So there's our metal activity series with the reactivity closer to the top and the weaker ones down at the bottom. And if you check that with uh, an actual metal activity series, you would see that it indeed is true.